What's up, everybody? So I am going live right now. Once again, just hopping on, doing a random live. Didn't really tell anybody about it. Just doing it. Um, I'm going to light this candle. Oh, so good. This type of scent smells so good. What is it? Cinnamon oatmeal cookie. Oh, so good. All right, let's get it. I'm going to have that candle right here. Okay. Okay, so we got Ross Damon in the chat. What's up? Um, so for whoever is starting to join in for this live, we're going to be talking about the occult sciences, the dark arts, things in regards to Kabbalah, in regards to the hidden sciences of spiritual initiation, um, things in that nature, archetypes, planetary energies, spirits, uh, and the mindset and the energetic state that you have to be in to be successful with these practices. What's up? So I see that we got people that are just joining in right now. Once again, this was a random live stream that I decided to hop onto. So as I speak, actually, I'm going to do an update for my Instagram to let people know that I'm going live right now. One moment. Actually, let's see here. I might just do it uh, Instagram live. Hold on. One moment, everybody. Okay, let's see here. Live. Let's see if I can get this right. Right there. Cool. Cool. That looks good for the most part. Let's see. Here. Okay. Okay, we are now live on Instagram as well. So as people join in on the Instagram, I'm simply just going to point them over to YouTube if they would like to come over and get the direct live stream like everyone else here is. Um, but yeah, other than that, we're just going to let it roll. What's up, uh, Aid uh, Aiden M and Kirim? If you want, what I would recommend with everybody that's jumping in uh, I would recommend clicking the link in my uh, Instagram description or my Instagram bio and then coming directly over to my YouTube channel because this is where I'm running the live stream. It's good to see everybody in there. What's up? Uh, uh, we got Mai who says, um, Mai says hello. Mai also says, I just talked with Balam 15 minutes ago, then a stream about Will O the Wisp popped up and now you're live. Very interesting. Sounds like there's a direct correspondence there. And uh, for everyone who's in this live stream, make sure you come over to the YouTube where I'm speaking directly to the live chat. You can ask your questions. The link is in my Instagram description or my Instagram bio. Okay. Uh, I see we got Devin McLean, who's a YouTube member in the chat. What's up, Devin McLean? Good to see you on here. Devin McLean says, yo. We've almost been on this for close to five minutes now. And if anybody has any questions, start filling up the chat right now. We are going to be going right into it. That's exactly why I do these live streams. I like uh, speaking about the occult and getting people the information that they need to evolve. Good to see everybody. Good to see everybody. So... We're just hanging out right now. Okay, K's Frequency says, demons feed off negative things like murder. So the question is, do demons feed off of negative things like murder? Uh, yes, demonic forces feed off of lower vibrations, which has to do with anxiety, has to do with fear, has to do with death, um, uh, depression, all of those feelings. Yes, they can feed off of that, and they do feed off of that meaning they gain power from those types of energies, okay? What's up, Kel? Good to see you on here. I see you're, you're asking questions on the Instagram. I'm going to be answering questions on the YouTube, so come over to the YouTube and type in your questions, and, and I'll answer them right over there. Um, and anyone that's tuning into the live on Instagram, come over to the YouTube where the link is in the uh, the Instagram description. 
and we're going to be talking about the occult sciences. Okay, let's see. Ross Damon says, how do I fill my being with demonic power or demonic energies for various purposes? Um, the best thing that you can do is begin with invocation. So invocation is when you are channeling a force, a spirit, an entity, and you're pulling it into yourself. So that is exactly how you're going to be filling your being, which means taking your own energy field and injecting it with a different type of energy field coming from that force, which in your case is a demonic force. So you're going to want to do invocations of the Ars Goetic demons, and that is something that I uh, directly teach on my Patreon uh, within the magic training course, okay? There is a whole section for demon magic. Okay. So let's see here. We got Epic last night that says, please teach us how to summon archangels. I tried, but failed, sir. Um, so yeah, so if you're going to want to summon an archangel, you're going to want to join my Patreon and become at least a tier three or up because I go through an entire magic training course and there's a whole section called angel magic. Okay, where we go through all the archangels and download their powers. And what that does is it um, preps you to be able to do very powerful invocation of those forces. But long story short, the way that you're going to do it is literally from doing invocation. So you're going to want to know the attributions of the spirit uh, of the angelic force. You're going to want to set up your, your ritualistic space uh, in a certain way. Uh, I create the circle of the magician and I use a triangle of art using Lemurian technology, which is associated with crystals. Um, so I create my circle with the crystals. I teach all of this information on my Patreon. Um, and then I sit in it, use the triangle of art, channel that energy within the triangle. You're going to want to have the symbolism present of the force you're trying to invoke. So of the archangel. And then you're going to want to create your own end your own chance to presence that angel um, to bring it to you. Uh, so that's the generalized concept of how you're going to do a successful invocation of an angel. The more physical links that you can have to associate to that angelic force, the easier it's going to be to invoke it, to pull it in. Okay. So let me give you a quick example. So I have a book, which is an entire encyclopedia of the angelic. So I'm just going to open to a random angel. So we have the angel of Camille right here. Okay. Camille. And I'll read off a brief description and I'll give you an example of how to do a successful invocation of Camille. So first let's start with what Camille can do. So Camille can create balance, release stress, awaken your, uh, in it, uh, goodness, find justice, succeed in any venture, improve your relationships. Okay. So this actually tells you right here through the invocation, what associations you want. So it tells you light a green candle, take a few deep breaths and allow Camille to surround you with his magnificent wings. Open your heart and ask for his assistance. Honest, honestly express your wants, needs, and desires. Allow, allow yourself to feel his love and be guided. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay. So Camille's name refers to divine justice. He wrestled with Jacob and appeared to Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane, filling him with hope at a time of great despair. So if you want to create links to this angelic force, you, if you have access to a printer or you could use your phone, I would recommend printing it out though. You can print a picture of this garden, the garden of Gethsemane. Okay. And that will link you to this angelic force because it's biblically associated with that garden. Um, filling him with hope at a time of great despair. In Druid mythology, his, he is a god of war and rules the planet Mars. So there's another association. So you can get a printout of Mars and have that be present when you're doing this invocation of this angel. Um, or you could just set up things around your space that represent Mars. You can have red candles. Okay, you can have uh, something that represents, I would just use a red candle because Mars is fiery and Mars is associated with the color red. So a red candle can work. There's another link. Um, when invoked, he can appear as a leopard crouching on a rock or as a warrior dressed in a red tunic. 
So you can simply get a printout of a leopard and set this all within your circle of the magician when you go to do this invocation. Um, or you could get a, lip, a real leopard, uh, like a statue of a leopard or like a little figure of a leopard and have it present in your space, all linking you to this angelic force of Camel. Okay. He wears a green vest and has huge green wings. When you call upon him, you will often see flashes of green. Okay. Kamel is the gatekeeper of heaven. He bestows power and invincibility on anyone who asks and who truly loves God. He awakens the goodness of holiness that exists within everyone. He deepens interpersonal relationships and assists with self-discipline. Okay. So these are all things that you would want to be stating within your invocation of this angel because this angel is associated with all of these different attributions. So working with this angel, these are the things you would want to be focused on um, improving within your life because of its connection already with the force. Okay. Yeah. So that was just a brief example of how you can do a successful invocation. Uh, you got to create links to these forces. And obviously what I teach on my Patreon is exactly how to set up your circle of the magician, which is going to increase your power because it's known throughout time that the circle uh, is very powerful. It enhances your psychic abilities. Um, it's also connected to all the circular spheres on the Kabbalistic tree. Okay. And uh, it protects you in regards to your occult practices. And then you want to have a wand. That's another thing. The wand is made out of wood, which controls earth energies. Um, so yeah, I teach all that on my Patreon. And once you join, you will have a general idea of how to do these invocations um, and how to successfully presence these energies. And I am going to be teaching advanced invocation on my Patreon very soon here. So that's what I'll say. The Patreon link is the first link in the description, by the way. Um, so yeah, so that was a good question. Let's see here. Let's see here. Mai says, oh, we got a super chat. So I see Felipe Nicholas leaves a super chat and he says, how's it going? Good to see you on here, Felipe. It's going very good. I appreciate you. Um, and for everyone that's in the live stream right now, definitely make sure you hit a thumbs up because I see we have more people in the live stream than we do with thumbs up. So if you look down and you see you haven't hit the thumbs up yet, just make sure you hit the thumbs up. Okay. Let's see here. Mai says, have you worked with St. Martin of Tours? Question came into my mind because I was checking your IG and you had a pick with a white horse there. No, I have not specifically worked with St. Martin. Okay. And I just want to let you know on the Instagram live, click the uh, link in my Instagram description, come over to the YouTube live. Okay. Devin McLean says, got the Night Sun tarot deck Friday. It's definitely a great one. Yes. The Night Sun Tarot deck, excuse me, is a, it's definitely a darker deck. It's definitely associated with Universe B, but it is a very great deck. I love it. I love it. I think it's way better than the regular, a, the re regular AE weight deck. I love it. Okay, let's see here. Um, what's up, my man? We are on YouTube Live, so click the Instagram link and come over. Uh, Ms. Wheat says during invocation, it is wise to pre uh, present an offer. What kind of offer is acceptable? Something tangible or something charged with your energy? Um, so Ms. Wheat's question, I'm going to answer it in piece by piece. The first part is during invocation, is it wise to present an offer? Um, it depends. It depends if you're wanting to actually, uh, depends on what you're trying to manifest. That's, that's for sure. And it also depends on what you're going to offer. Um, personally, I don't do that. I don't, I don't offer anything but my own initiation. So my offer is me developing the, the power to get what it is that I want. So I'm not going to go around and do the bidding of some other external force that is telling me it wants all these different things just to get what it is that I want from that force. Rather, I'm going to do what I need to do to evolve, and that will be enough energy to produce uh, the outcome I'm looking for from the spirit. 
So the way I approach magic is taking control of these spiritual forces where I'm saying, hey, look, this is what I want from you. I'm invoking you to get that. Um, and I'm willing to go down the path to get that thing that I'm wanting. So that's what I'll say to um, presenting an offer. I don't really do offerings whatsoever. But if you are going to do an offering, I would just do incense because incense is, uh, you know, good enough. You know, it's associated with fire because you're burning the incense and there's smoke. That's associated with the realm of the east, which has to do with fire and the demonic. So a lot of the times, uh, you know, universe B entities will very gladly take that energy coming off of the incense and that can be an offering. But you don't need to do that. But I, you know, during my path, I've definitely used incense. So that's what you can use. Uh, the second part is what kind of what kind of offer is acceptable? Something tangible or something charged with your energy? Yeah. So that's basically it. So, you know, when you go to light your incense, first, before doing that, put your intention into the incense of whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. So a general thing that you can do is just put your intention towards uh, you know, your evolution in that incense. And if you're invoking that, that spirit or that force for an evolutionary purpose, then that's what burning the incense, the incense is going to represent. You're basically empowering that spirit to then empower you to go through the initiatory process that that spirit can help you go through by letting the incense. So that's what I'll say to that. Ross Damon says, thank you. I appreciate you, Ross. Lil Kel says, what's up, bro? I'm here now. Good to see you on here, Lil Kel. Definitely good to see you on here. You're, you say, have you read Rites of Lucifer, Temple of Ascending Flame? No, I haven't. I have not read that. I have not read that. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I see that we got another super chat. So I just want to let everyone know, uh, if you want to guarantee your questions get answered within this live stream, Definitely make sure you go ahead and you leave a super chat because the super chats are for sure going to get covered and they will be covered in the most depth that I can give. So super chats are going to be your best way to communicate with me. Okay. Let's see. Felipe Nicholas says, is dark stronger than light? Um, I, yes, I will say darkness, the state of non-being is more powerful than the state of being. I would say magnetic is stronger than electric. Um, because with enough dark matter energy, it literally produces a light. Um, so light came from darkness. So the darkness uh, has scientific properties that a lot of our conscious minds don't fully understand. So in regards to your question, is dark stronger than light? Yes, dark matter energy consists of more space. It's, it is the abyss and the entire tree of life right here floats in the abyss. So this entire structure of evolution, which runs through all of us as humans in our bloodline, in our genetic code, this all exists within the abyss. So the abyss is beyond that's why the highest veils are called ain sulf ain or excuse me ain sulfur ain sulf and ain and essentially what that means is the nothingness it is the abyss so the top sphere on the tree is pulling energy from the the abyss and beyond to the source of everything which is you know, dark and light and up and down, left and right, cold and hot. It is everything. And it all comes from that space of the nothingness, which is something. So I will answer your question. Yes, dark is stronger than light. Um, and in regards to the magic field, uh, what's it called? Left-hand path magicians are way more powerful than right-hand path magicians. Okay, because left-hand, true left-hand path magicians are also right hand path magicians. Uh, you know, we heal ourselves, we we build up our empires and the people we love, and we destroy our enemies. But a, a right hand path, a, a white magician, they don't use destructive magic. They try to present, uh, prevent themselves from doing that. And I do not believe that is the most effective way to evolve. 
And scientifically speaking, it's not. Okay. So that's what I'll say to that. Thank you very much for that super chat. That was a very good question. Okay. Going back to where I was. My says, can piercings have an occult meaning like some tattoos? Yeah, of course. Anything that you give a meaning to can have an effect. You know, as long as you have the power to be able to give your intentions uh, that energy. So for all my piercings, they're all gold. This is real gold. And they all are tuned to the center of the tree, which is beauty. So this brings good things into my life. And I have three piercings, which is the supernal triad, which is the top of the tree that brings me all good things from the supernal triad. Okay. That's what it symbolizes to me. And the, the, this is a heart. This is a bat. And this is a circle. So this is source, the circle, the circle, the sphere of source on my left ear, pulling it in. This is a bat, which is vampiric, which sends out and then pulls back in. And then this is a heart, which is associated with love and the seven spirals of love, which pulls all that into me. So th this all has very deep meaning to me. I know a lot of people won't understand that, but that's what it does to me. And uh, gold naturally has its own energetic properties in general. You know, there's a reason why it's one of the most valuable metals there is. And this is gold. This is gold as well. These are both gold. And then these two are silver. Okay. Okay. So that was good. Good question. Thank you very much. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. So my, okay. So multi-digital coder says, pardon, did you say Camille or Camille? Uh, the first one, Camille with a C. Yes. Let's see. Yo, what's up, Bruce Dallas? Come over on the YouTube. We're on the, uh, if you click the Instagram, uh, link in my description, you'll come over here and this is where we're all at. Okay. Good to see you. Philip magical number 12 says highly recommended the training course and the vampire service. So Philip is a member of the Patreon who has access to the magic training course on my Patreon. Uh, and Philip magical number 12 is saying right now to everybody, he highly recommends getting the vampire service, which is my top tier service on my Patreon, where I literally use high level of call magic. That takes me a very long time to create uh, every time I do the service and it permanently changes your energy field. And it, it attunes it to be more universe B dominant so that you can exist in chaotic realms and over time gain power from them rather than getting destroyed in them. Um, and Philip Magical number 12 has that service done on him and then also has access to the magic training course to then begin developing occult power from the step-by-step -step process that I teach on my Patreon for tier three and up. And what I do recommend for everybody is to get the tier four first, get the service performed for you first, and then go into the magic training because it'll be a lot more effective uh, and quicker for you if you do that because having that energetic change uh, will for sure benefit you during your call practices. But you don't necessarily need it. You can do it without that, but it may not be as effective as if you had the top tier service done for you beforehand. Okay. So it all depends on what you think in your own intuition. Let's see here. Thank you, Philip. I appreciate you for saying that. Adam says, Hey bro, I was wondering how much would it cost you to do a spell to incite lust, passion, and sexual desire in a partner that I'm interested in? How much would it cost and how long will it take slash work? So Adam, I told you that's something that you want to contact me on my email to get more information about. So definitely send me a message on my email, jeremiahjschwartz at gmail.com. Um, and we can talk more about that. Um, but it's not cheap. Okay. Multi-digital coder says thumbed up. I appreciate you. Um, Let's see here. Okay, so I see we got another super chat. So I'm going to take a look at that. So super chat says, by got us and says, 
what happens when you invoke all Goetia spirits? Um, well, what will happen is it will be very powerful. Um, you will have a lot of different energetic influences uh, all taking place at the same time. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it to anybody for sure, uh, unless you're very skilled and you know exactly why you're calling all the Ars Goetia. But uh, yeah, I mean, it would just be sort of like an overload of energy. It would be different types of energies influencing you all at the same time. Uh, and I don't see how that would be productive whatsoever. So unless you have a specific reason exactly why you're, you're summoning or invoking all of those entities at the same time, then I wouldn't do it. Um, but yeah, that's what would happen. It'd just be like a lot of energetic influence all happening at once. A lot of chaos. Okay. Thank you for that super chat. I really appreciate you. That was a good question. Uh, let's see here. Occult Cat TV Cool Cat says, what's up, fams? Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you on here. Multi Digital says, too low cal. I did. Okay, perfect. Michelle says, heart, heart, heart. Good to see you on here, Michelle. Uh, Michelle also says, thank you for everything. I appreciate you and thank you for uh, being you. Aziz Turkey says, hi. Good to see you, Aziz. And Drit says, bro, where do I start as a magician? Um, okay. So where you want to start, what I would recommend is I would recommend first getting a tarot card reading with me so that I can locate where you are on this Kabbalistic tree itself. And then once I locate where you are, you can have a general idea of how this system works and where you are on this because this is the initiatory system of the spirit. Okay, so even if you're not aware of how this tree functions, this is literally happening to people, okay? And they don't even need to know about it for it to be working. Same thing happened with me. I traveled through this entire tree before I even knew about the tree itself. That's why it's in the shape of the genetic code because it literally runs through your blood, okay? Now, there's a gateway here called Dath you enter into, takes you to the back of the Sephiroth. And then from the back, you can hop into universe, uh, excuse me, you can hop into the clip off. And this is the realm of hell. So this requires uh, an awareness of dark magic and a, and a certain level of practice of dark magic or open openness to dark magic to get into the clip off um, as an initiate. Um, so this is the realm of the soul. So this is deeper, but everyone, like most of the people I do readings for, like 90 five percent are on the sephirothic tree they're somewhere located in one of these spheres pulling on some of these different pathways and the goal is to figure out where you're at and i can do that for my readings and i've done over a hundred readings and i've been able to pinpoint it for everybody so what i would recommend first is getting a reading with me so i can pinpoint where you are and then i would recommend studying the tree so i would recommend getting a, a book or a couple books that are on the Kabbalistic tree, for example, a great recommendation, and I have all the recommendations on my Patreon, but great recommendations would be um, the Mystical Kabbalah by Dion Fortune, okay? Then there's the Sefer Yetzirah, the Sefer Yetzirah, which is the first book that was written on Judaic Kabbalism, okay, which talks about the spheres. Then you have uh, the Holy Kabbalah, which I highly recommend getting, by Arthur Edward Waite, A.E. Waite, okay? If you read these three books, you'll have a general perspective on the Kabbalistic tree and how it functions. And as you get that reading with me, you'll be able to understand why you're located where you are and what to, you know, what you're experiencing from where you're located and where you're headed and how the, the, the system of initiation functions, okay? So that's essentially what I would recommend. Uh, studying those spheres. And I also break down the spheres on my Patreon as well. Okay. Every single Sephirothic sphere and all the Clipothic spheres. So that's what I'll say to that. Let's see here. Endrit says tunnel of set Clipoth. Um, so that was in connection to where do you start as a magician? No, you do not want to start with the tunnels of set and the clip off. I would start with the Sephiroth and get to the top of the Sephiroth 
So start here and travel up and you're probably already located somewhere on here. You just don't know like where you are. So figure out where you are, continue moving and then go through the crossing of the abyss on the separate tree. And when you get to the top, Kether, then you are psychologically, emotionally, mentally prepared to go into deeper level initiation. So then you can travel down into Dath, enter in the gateway. That then takes you to the tunnels of set. But I don't recommend you start working with the tunnels of set right off the bat. I would personally recommend once you finish the top, going directly to the clip off, which is this tree. And it's the back side of the clip off. So in order to get into the clip off, you have to do certain uh, invocations of specific spirits that can pull you in there as an initiate. Okay. So that's exactly what I would recommend, but that's later down the road. First, you want to get to the top of the Sephiroth. Okay. Let's see here. Endrit says, I don't know what they are. I'm trying to learn in the right order. That's fine. You just got to keep doing your research. Um, and I would recommend getting a reading because I can literally show you where you're at and what to expect moving forward. Okay. Bruce Dallas three says, I'm in here. Good to see you on here, Bruce. And I saw that you were first on the Instagram and then you came over. Uh, what's up everybody. So whoever's on the Instagram live, click the link that's in my Instagram description and then come over to the YouTube live. We're going live on YouTube right now. Okay. Um, my says, by the way, what about that wisp stream that I watched before this? The presenter said the wisps rapidly change colors. And then he showed a pic where three wisps were forming an inverted triangle. Very clip Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely clip universe B type of energy. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not sure exactly what it means to you and your own personal experience. That's something that you're going to have to, uh, find out for yourself, you know, trust your intuition and continue doing your practices. But it is very clipothic. And uh, yeah, the inverted triangle is associated with the lower triad. So that's for sure. Occult Cat TV Cool Cat says, What tests have you noticed you've been going through within the clip off? Um, so essentially, within the clipothic realm, you go through these archetypal paths. Okay. And not only that, but you're in the spheres. Okay. So. For example, when I was in the sphere of Gamaliel, which is ruled by Lilith, um, Lilith had manifested in my workplace and uh, just in my life in general and was influencing me very heavily. Now, this uh, sphere is also associated with the unconscious and the subconscious and sexual liberation is directly associated with Lilith. Uh, so what happened to me is I ended up going to this mansion, or excuse me, not a mansion, a, pin, a penthouse, because one of my friends had access to it, and he invited me over, and it was me and two of my other brothers, and we're all occultists, and we did a huge ritual at night when the moon was out, and this is when I was in this sphere, okay? And we did a ritual specifically with Lilith, and then I had work a couple hours later and I walked to work at the time I worked at Equinox. Um, and I noticed that day at work after this ritual, I had the awakening that the sexual energetic awakening of that everyone in the world, most human beings are operating from a programmed state of, uh, being. So most people are tuned into a matrix that they are unaware they're tuned into and they're acting, speaking, and behaving from the instructions of that matrix. So when I was in Equinox, I saw that clearly and I could see the, I literally could see as crazy as it sounds, I could see this matrix of the, the, the environment I was standing in and I could see how people were just behaving in acting in accordance to that matrix program. Okay. And there's a lot of people that talk about this perspective and all those things, but that specifically happened to me 
when I was in this sphere. And obviously that's a pretty hard truth to swallow. So it's a hard truth to recognize and say, wow, most of the human species is plugged in to a matrix that is actually set up to harm them and work against them, to invert them. So that is a test within itself because they say ignorance is bliss. But what I say is ignorance is bliss in the immediate moments, but ignorance in the long term is ultimate permanent suffering. So that's a moment when I realized that and I saw that with my eyes and my, my understanding where I had to accept that as a truth. I was like, wow, you know, maybe the majority of the human species is actually not themselves. Maybe they're, they're literally like these drone like robots that are literally programmed to act and think a certain way. And I've done a lot of uh, sitting on that belief and it is to my perspective, what I'm experiencing and what I'm seeing around me, that is the exact case that is happening in the world we live in today. We're living in a world where there is a matrix, a five dimensional matrix that is layered on this planet. And most of the human species are plugged into that without them being aware. And that's why they think, act and behave and feel the way they do. And they don't even know why they feel that way. So whoever controls the matrix and whoever is the higher up being of that matrix, that's the person or the people, the group of people that are going, that are going to control the human species on our planet. So that's what I'm going to say to that. Let's see here. And that was just one experience of the clip off specifically within Gamaliel. Let's see. Okay. So I see there is another super chat and this one is by Felipe Nicholas and Felipe says, how much is a reading? So I'm li I'll literally, uh, man, I was, but I don't think I can. Let me see here. Um, okay. So I was going to demonstrate it, but I forgot I'm on Instagram live. Um, so yeah, so literally a reading is going to be $40. Um, flat, but you also have an option if you want to leave a tip. Some a lot of times people do, and then there's other times where people don't. Um, but it's forty dollars flat, and you can book me through my Instagram profile where I have a tab that's below my page that literally says book now. So when you go to my Instagram, you can literally see there's a book now tab in the bottom where there's all those little tabs. Um, so you can book there. Or you could book in the second link of this YouTube description. Or if you go to any of my other recent YouTube videos, you can go to the YouTube description and go to the second link. And that's where you can book that appointment with me. And the appointment gets booked through Square, which is a, uh, a secondary app that sets the entire appointment up so that when you book, I get the notification and then I end up sending you a message. Um, that says, Hey, look, you know, uh, all I need from you is a random three digit number and the purpose for getting your reading. And then once I get that from you, um, I have you download the app WhatsApp. And then once I finish doing your reading, I will record a personalized video for you, uh, of the breakdown of your entire reading, which is usually a minimum of 30 minutes long. Usually it's longer. And then I send it to you through WhatsApp in different clips. And I explain which clips are the first ones to watch second and then third. And you have the reading literally forever because it's on video format. And then I send you pictures of each card. And then I give you homework at the very end of the reading to study your reading to a deeper degree. Okay. And this is all for $40 and it's very valuable. And that's why there's people that have gotten many more readings from me, like up to four to three readings uh, with one person. Uh, so I recommend it. I really, I truly do. Like, I'm not saying that just because, you know, it's a service I offer. I really do recommend it. And you know, when I, I, I have a gift, I have a skill to be able to locate where people are. And I see someone just booked a reading with me right now. Um, that's awesome. But I have a skill where I can literally pinpoint where you are on this tree and I can explain it in a way that's understandable. And I also explain to you how this tree functions. There, I do not know many people that are doing that and that can do that. So it's definitely something that I would take advantage of if you're wanting to really understand how the Kabbalah tree functions and where specifically you're located. Okay. 
And I've done this for so long now. I mean, I've been using the tarot deck on myself from the beginning of my initiatory journey before I even knew how to do the readings for other people. So I've had close to four years of experience using the cards, uh, the first uh, two years on myself only. And then once that third year hit and in the middle of the third year, now I'm starting to use it for other people and I'm pretty good at it. You know, I'm not even, I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat it. I'm pretty good at it. And it's, it's, it really offers people value. And that's why it's a service I offer. It's something that I, that I, uh, you know, part of the deal that I have with source right now is that's what I offer. Okay. Um, cool. So let's take a look here. So I hope that fully answered your question, um, Felipe. I appreciate you for leaving that super chat. So let's take a look. I see we got some other super chats. So Felipe Nicholas left another super chat and says, my mom comes from royalty who does magic. Excuse me. And my dad is a crazy bum, okay? Only crazy person in his family. Is this an angel and demon mix? Um, no, it's not necessarily like just because your dad is crazy and a bum does not necessarily mean he is a, he's a demon. Um, it may indicate that he's being affected by demonic forces that are preventing him from, you know, stepping into his purpose or his, his true potential because he's making the choice to be a bum. Uh, and he's not making the choice to try to figure out why his life is going that way. Um, so yeah, so royalty and, and all that stuff that doesn't just because you're royalty and you come from a, a family that is royalty doesn't mean that you're angelic in nature. Uh, there's a lot of, I mean, most of the people that are royalty in the world we live in today are using uh, demonic forces and the most wealthy people on the planet are primarily using demonic forces to maintain and uh, conjure that level of wealth. So, yeah, so I would say those two don't really go together. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for that super chat. I appreciate you. That was a good question. Okay, so the next super chat says, the next super chat is by Cranges. And the question is, what spirits are recommended for developing warrior spirits? Um, you say ruthlessness plus impeccability question. How do you know when you've completely alchemized a spirit's qualities? Okay, that is a very good question, and I always appreciate these types of questions. Uh, let me say real quick, anyone that's on the Instagram live, if you want, you can tune in on the YouTube live and directly interact with me through the chat. Um, all you have to do is click the Instagram link and come over here, okay? Instagram link in my description. It'll literally take you to this YouTube live. Okay, so to answer your question, Cranges. Um, I'm going to answer it in pieces. What spirits are recommended for developing warrior spirit, ruthlessness, plus impeccability? Um, definitely, uh, what spirits, uh, Belial is for sure a spirit that will bring, uh, that level of ruthlessness and warrior spirit and impeccability. Um, so I see we actually, as I'm saying this, I'm literally getting tarot card appointments, I just got three tarot card appointments as we speak. So people are definitely taking advantage of that service. Uh, and I would recommend anyone else does as well. So that's going to give me a busy couple days. But um, yeah, so I would definitely recommend Belial. That is 100% sure. Um, Belial brings that level of ruthlessness out of you. And he's also a higher up in the hierarchy of the demonic entities. So when you're speaking about a demonic force, that has a higher up position in those hierarchies, that often means and does mean that they can connect you to the uh, other demonic forces that are under their authority. So for example, with Belial being associated with ruthlessness, uh, being associated with being a warrior and fiery, but also being associated with the worthless one, which is a very good balance uh, for your ego and developing your, your, your soul, um, Belial, if, if, if you're doing invocation of Belial and you're saying to Belial that you're wanting to develop a warrior spirit uh, and you're wanting to become more ruthless and you also state that you are open to other demonic forces that Belial thinks uh, will be in your best interest to communicate with, then Belial will uh, assign a different Ars Goetia or demonic force to you 
that he feels or that that energy feels is properly associated with your level of development towards those two things, impeccability and ruthlessness. So long story short, I would recommend working with Belial and being open and stating exactly what you're looking for. And, you know, going as far as saying, uh, Belial, uh, if there's any other demonic forces that you think will help me develop these qualities, please send them to me. Because once again, he is higher up in the hierarchy and has direct uh, authority over most of the Ars Goetia. Uh, so that would be my best advice to you. And the second part is how do you know when you've completely alchemized a spirit's qualities? After doing a, a, a good amount of invocation of that force, you're going to have a pretty solid awareness of what energies are behind that force, what symbolism starts to appear in your life when you do those invocations of that force, how you're feeling when that force is in uh, is influencing you. And then over time, that, that feeling and those correspondences and that symbolism literally becomes a permanent part of your reality. So every time you see the symbolism and correspondences associated with that force that you're doing invocation of or that you're trying to alchemize, you immediately associate it with that force and you have that direct understanding of that force. Okay. You have a direct awareness of that force and it becomes a part of you. And that's how you know that you've completely alchemized a force like that. And you will also feel intuitively led to not doing any more invocations of that force because once you fully alchemize it, then you don't need to do any more invocations of it because you're, it's already become a part of your energy field. So you, you literally have become the force. Okay. That is my path of magic where you are the ultimate vampiric being that sucks in all of these forces and they become you. You are taking all the power attributes and energy from these forces and you are adding them to your energy field, becoming the ultimate being. That's how I use uh, magic and that's how I approach magic. Okay. And that doesn't mean that you don't respect the spirit. Um, you know, you obviously want to have respect for these forces because it wouldn't make sense to not have respect for a force that you know you're gaining power from. Okay. That wouldn't be natural. So definitely have respect in the process but be ruthless and impeccable knowing what you're doing. Okay. So that's what I recommend. Okay. Thank you very much for that super chat. I appreciate you. Let's see here. So I see we got a super chat from wild child tarot and, uh, she left $5. I don't see any questions that have been asked from you wild child. I appreciate, um, I really appreciate the super chat. Um, if you have any questions that you want to ask that go behind the super chat, definitely type it in the chat and I'll, I'll make sure I cover that. Uh, but if you're just leaving support, you know, I highly appreciate you. You know, I highly appreciate the support. Absolutely. Um, so thank you, wild child and wild child is no stranger to my YouTube channel. Wild child has been tuned into my YouTube channel. Um, when I first started, so wild child remembers when I had little to no subscribers. And since then I've built up you know, a pretty good subscriber base and it's only growing. We're only going up. Okay. Uh, so yeah. And I just want to say everyone right now, um, if you are new to this live stream and you have not yet hit a thumbs up, definitely make sure you go and you hit that thumbs up button. Okay. It would be highly appreciated. And if you have any friends or family that is interested in this type of content, or if you have a social media following that's interested in this type of content, Definitely share the link and post it on your social medias or just share it to a friend or a family member that you know that's interested in this type of information, okay? So let's see here. Felipe Nicholas says, Clipoth seems more powerful than Sephira, but are demons stronger than angels? Yes, the Clipoth is more powerful than the Sephiroth because it's coming from that dark matter energy space. Uh, and then you say, but are demons stronger than angels? It's not about them necessarily being stronger. It's just that they're different beings that do different things. It, that would be like saying, is water stronger than fire? Okay. Or is air stronger than earth? It's like, 
there's not one that's stronger than the other because if you have a little bowl of water that's in a forest of fire, that water's not going to do anything. The fire's going to consume the water, turn it to steam. Um, but if you have a little, you know, fire and and then you bring an entire bucket and dump it on, the fire is going to override the water. So it's not about one stronger than the other. They just have different properties. Okay. So specifically angels, they add to your objective reality, your physical reality. This is what they're naturally very good at adding to your objective physical reality, but requiring soul fluid to do that. Okay. So angels, that's why they're associated with universe a and the Sephiroth because they're more electric and they're more illusion based where they add to your illusionary reality because the reality is, is we're humans that have a soul. And the only reason why we're primarily here is to evolve. Okay. So that's the reality we live in, but we also want to experience different aspects of that reality, which includes those universe a objective things that are illusionary, which is the Sephiroth. So that's a part of our existence and we want to experience those. We desire that it's a part of our nature. So, you know, that's what the angels are good at doing. The demons are good at removing and deleting from the illusionary universe, a objective reality, but then adding to your soul, they add to your soul. Okay. So that's what I'm going to say to that. And I see we got another booking. We literally in this past, I want to say 10 minutes, I've gotten, I think, five tarot card reading bookings, which is going to be very busy for me over the next couple of days. And, I, you know, once again, you know, big shout out to everyone that booked this tarot card reading because uh, that was a very smart decision. Because once again, these readings are very powerful and they are initiatory in nature. Like when I do these readings for you, they're using the tarot cards. The tarot cards, the 22 arcana is associated with the paths on the tree and it is a form of initiation. So if you are open enough and you're receptive enough and you're really taking what I'm telling you, you, you can use the reading as a, a way to initiate. Okay. And that's what a lot of the people do when they get the readings with me. That's why they get multiple readings. Um, so yes. Yeah, so huge shout out to everyone that booked an appointment. Uh, I'm sure you're going to, you're going to really get the value from this reading. Okay. And I'm excited to do it. Okay. So there we go. I see we got some people in the live stream on Instagram. Hey, if you want to tune into the regular live stream on YouTube, click the Instagram link that's in my Instagram bio where you can literally speak in the chat. Okay. Because I'm answering all the chats on YouTube, but it's good to see everybody who's in the uh, Instagram live. Okay. Okay, so that was good. So I see we got another super chat. Wait, let me see if Wild Child left a question. Okay, Wild Child says, I didn't add a question to my super chat, but I have a question. Okay, so yes. So let me read your question before the next super chat. And as I read these super chats, I just want to say, if anyone wants to guarantee their questions get answered in the most depth throughout this live stream, definitely make sure you go ahead and you leave a super chat because you can guarantee it'll, it will get answered and in the most depth that I possibly can. Other than that, I just scroll through the chat and I answer the questions in the way that I feel like answering them uh, to the best degree that I can. But you know, I, I don't spend as much time as somebody that's going to really uh, you know, spend money to get their questions asked because obviously those people are taking their questions a little bit more seriously. Um, so let's read Wild Child's Tarot uh, question. Her question is, do you use any protection when you work with the Ars Goetia or is TB or is it really necessary? Okay. So that is a great question. And when I'm going to be very honest and transparent with you, um, when I first started my occult practices, I wasn't aware of having protection. I wasn't aware of uh, you know, what I needed to protect myself, um, mainly because the people I was learning from didn't really speak about protecting yourself. Um, so when I went in and began my first occult practices, which was me doing invocation and then going into doing spells, um, I was getting possessed. 
Okay. I was getting possessed and I knew I was getting possessed. There was a, there was demonic force, uh, that was coming into me based on the spirit that I was invoking. And it was influencing my internal dialogue. It was influencing, uh, my thought process and the way I felt, which also included my reality shifting. So thankfully I'm naturally gifted in the psychic field, in the occult field. Obviously I'm an occult professional. I'm a teacher. So hopefully I would be gifted, but um, I am, and that was okay with me. You know, I, I learned how to, uh, experience and embrace getting possessed by these forces. And because I have a warrior spirit and I'm impeccable and I'm naturally ruthless because of all the, you know, past experiences I've been through in my life that have like caused me to be ruthless. Uh, my morals are different than the average person. So it, it makes it a lot easier for me to be ruthless um, I was fine. You know, I knew patience was key and I knew to not psych myself out or freak myself out as I was getting possessed by these demonic forces. Um, it also took a lot of discipline and a lot of sitting in silence and, you know, as I said, discipline for myself to really still my mind and, and process what was happening. Okay. But for the average person that can really freak them out. And a lot of people go to this path they start their practices without any protection and then they get possessed like what happened to me, but they don't have the warrior spirit and they don't have the ruthlessness and they're not impeccable. And then they freak themselves out and then they run the other direction. And that is not recommended because once you invite this, you know, for example, like a demonic force in, you're opening a gate to universe B. Okay. So that force is then going to start feeding off of your fear, your anxiety, uh, your depression, and all these other negative low vibration feelings. And if you're trying to distract yourself from that force, once you've already opened up that door, it's going to have a direct access point to further uh, feed off of your energy. So that's never recommended. So what I recommend for most people getting into the occult field, the people that are just trying to start their practices is setting up a magic circle and using a triangle of arts and using a wand and using your Enochian orb. So there are tools that can really help you throughout this beginner magic process, magical process of developing occult power. And this is exactly what I teach on my Patreon. Um, you gain access to some of the exclusive content, for example, how to set up your magic circle, um, how to charge your crystals. You gain access to that at tier two. Uh, but at tier three, I literally demonstrate myself uh, calling up these forces, angelic, demonic, and necromancy, dead magicians. I demonstrate myself using the magic myself, using the wand, how you're supposed to use it, using the orb, trapping the spirit in the orb, uh, and linking all of that to your own energy body. Okay. So that will prevent you from getting possessed, uh, to the degree that you would without using any of the tools. Okay. And I've used both. I've done it without tools and I've done it with tools. And for a fact, it does protect you in regards to possession. When you use the circle of the magician and the triangle of art and your orb and wand, you literally can prevent yourself from getting possessed. Okay. Um, it's just a fact because some, you know, the energetic properties that go behind the circle and then all the different crystals that you're using in your wand, uh, it really is a, is a strategic ancient formula for doing magic without the force really influencing you. Um, now as a deep left-hand path magician, uh, I, I have a weird, um, I'm not, yeah, you could say weird. I have a weird desire to go into the occult to a degree that is dangerous where I liked, you know, getting possessed to really experience what that force was about and what it feels like. And there are other people that want to go down that road too, and want to really get that experience of what that spirit feels like as it's possessing them. Um, and I'm aware there's both groups of people. Uh, what I recommend for the beginners is set up all your tools and as you develop a foundation of power uh, using the tools and linking it to yourself, then you can start stepping in a little bit deeper 
maybe doing invocation without your tools to just experience what that would be like and getting possessed to a, a, a smaller degree rather than just jumping in as a beginner and getting possessed and then freaking out and psyching yourself out and running the other direction. So, I mean, at where I'm at now, I use tools because the tools are going to make my magic more powerful anyways. So to answer your question, um, wild child, uh, that, that is it. I use my circle of the magician. I use all the tools that I'm currently teaching on my Patreon. And what I recommend is becoming a tier three or up to gain access to the magic training course so that you can see me do it myself. Okay. So thank you very much, wild child. I appreciate that. That was a great question. That was a great question. Okay. So here's the next super chat and it's by Toland J Moore who leaves $5. I appreciate you Toland. And he says, just booked a reading. Did you ever get a chance to post your version of the initiation into both of the trees? Thanks for sharing your experience. Well, that's awesome that you just booked a reading. I'm glad that you did. And I look forward to doing your reading. Um, I, I like your profile picture of Darth Vader. That's awesome. And actually Darth Vader in regards to Star Wars was associated with Dath. So Dath, Darth, very similar. And as you know, from the movie series, he dies right off the first movie. So death is associated with death. And to cross the abyss, you have to go through a death. Okay. So that's what that was connected to. Just throwing that out there. Um, so the beginning of the Star Wars series opened up the death gateway to get people into the tunnels of set and then the clip off. That's what the A-list movie productions try to do in their movies. It's psychic warfare done to the mass collective. But most people won't tell you that because most people don't know that. Um, let's see here. And just throwing this out here too, I recently went to um, Hollywood. I was in Hollywood because I went to Universal Studios. And right after I left Hollywood, there happened to be a couple earthquakes that just took place, which is very interesting. Very, very interesting if you ask me. Okay. There's a big shift taking place if you can see the correspondence earth shake shift okay so here we go so your question is okay so did i ever get a chance to post my version of initiation into both of the trees so no i have not yet released my initiation course um that is something that i'm going to be releasing in 2022 because that is the year of initiation obviously 22 is associated with the 22 pathways on the tree. So it makes sense why I would be releasing that on the 22nd or it, not on the 22nd, but in the year of 2022. But the way that I'm going to set up that course is going to be, uh, it's not gonna be on my Patreon. It's gonna be separate. It's gonna, I'm gonna create my own package specifically for the Sephiroth and then specifically for the clip off. So I'll have a package of Sephirothic initiation and everything you need to know about it demonstrated on camera of what you need to do, explaining, uh, showing you and teaching you. And then the same exact thing with the clip authic initiation universe B, which is going to include the, the information on the tunnels of set and everything in that nature. Um, so yeah, so this is all going to be coming in the year of 2022 and the course is probably going to be somewhere around $400, uh, per course. Uh, so it's definitely, it's not going to be cheap, but that's uh, uh, not that expensive either, uh, for what it offers. That's very cheap. Um, and yeah, that's going to be huge. It's going to be life changing for a lot of the occult field, uh, when that course comes out. Okay. That's what I'm going to say to that. Let's see here. And thank you very much for that. Uh, that super chat. I appreciate you. What I would recommend for you is, is joining the Patreon and starting with the magic training course or to anyone else that's listening start with the magic training course and work your way through that so that when the course comes uh or you know just in general when you decide you want to start really going into your initiation full force uh whether that's sephirothic or clipothic the magic training course is a foundational practice that is developing your own power so i would highly recommend going through that entire course first and then getting focused in on your initiations afterwards. It'll make your initiations a lot more effective. And then definitely I would recommend getting the tier four vampire service before getting into the magic training course, uh, especially before going into 
your initiations with the Sephiroth or the Clipoth, uh, because that will make it a lot more effective as well. Um, and I am performing that service on the 29th of this month. So if anyone wants to take advantage of that, check out the Patreon link below in the description. Okay. Let's see here. So thank you very much for that super chat. That was a very great question and I appreciate you. Let's see. Okay. And just another, uh, Another reminder, if you want to guarantee your questions get answered within this live stream, definitely make sure you leave a super chat and it will get covered in the most depth. And if anybody else is in here that has not yet hit the thumbs up button, definitely make sure you look below and see if you hit it. And if not, definitely hit that button. Okay. And I appreciate everyone for being active in the chat. Let's keep it up. You know, keep leaving your questions and let's see what's going on. Okay. My says, why do some names have a silent H at the end? As if, excuse me, as far as I know, it had something to do with vampirism. Kind of random, but I thought I would start share it. I thought I would share it. Um, I'm not. I'm not necessarily sure. I'm not necessarily sure. That's a good question. Tolan says, thanks for sharing your experience and gnosis with us. Really am enjoying your Tree of Life, Tree of Death, and Goetia video series. Uh, I appreciate you, and thank you very much. And if you specifically like the like those, but the Goetia series, uh, in the next, I want to say, two days, I'm going to be having a Goetia video uploaded to my Patreon for Tier 2 members and up. And it is going to go through the entire 70, 72 hours Goetia with their brief description included. So I'm sure you'll you'll like that video as well. Cranges says, yo, what's up, Cranges? Tolan says, also, where do we get that groovy chart? The groovy chart. Oh, the groovy chart. You can find this on um, Amazon. If you look up the Kabbalah Tree of Life, this should pop up on Amazon. Okay, this was bought from Amazon. I have like four of them too. Okay. Michelle says, what tunnel or sphere does Lucifer meet you? I summoned him. I understand from him that he has always been with me. Um, so what tunnel or sphere does Lucifer meet you? He can meet you in, in, in anywhere. He is associated with the entire tree. So you can meet Lucifer and experience Lucifer whenever. Uh, he's associated with the top, the front of the tree, and the bottom, backside. But oftentimes, you'll become aware of Lucifer within the center of the tree, ruled by the sun. Okay, and then also in the back, uh, in the bottom backside, the center of the tree. Thagirion ruled by the black sun. Okay. But, uh, I always recommend having a, a relationship with Lucifer before getting into clip Gothic or universe B initiation. That's for sure. Because you definitely want, uh, interdimensional guides going through that process like Lucifer or Hecate. So things like that. Okay. That's Andrew says, thank you for your answer. Can't wait to get into your Patreon. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited to have you a part of it. Definitely excited. We're doing a lot of, I'm doing a lot of work on it right now. Like there's a lot of videos that I'm excited to be releasing on my Patreon. Cran just says, is there any value in the satanic Bible? Um, I haven't read it, so I don't know. I'm sure there's some, but I'm sure there's a lot of dogma too. Michelle says, what a trip about your matrix vision your matrix vision. Yes, it was a trip. It was a lot to take in. That's for sure. Uh, Mai says, I also had a Lilith manifest, a friend whose name was Lilith. She was the exact archetype of the demon, but at least she pulled me away from the universe A mindset. See, exactly. That's exactly what that force will do. Lilith is a sexually free, liberated feminine energy that's dark, promiscuous, and will do 
ruthless things to get you to realize your own ruthless nature. Okay. Doesn't mean you want to necessarily be in a relationship with a Lilith, you know, or, you know, be closely associated with a Lilith uh, archetypal person, but that the spirit itself can offer you a lot of value. So that's why I do a lot of invocation of uh, Lilith, or, or I, at least I did during my journey because I was focused on my evolution and she kept teaching me how to be ruthless and how to focus on myself and uh, not get caught up in the confines of, you know, morality, you know, focus on your evolution and be ruthless towards that and free yourself. Okay. Build up your sexual energy to free yourself. So that's what I did. Okay. So I see we got another super chat. So let me go check that. Tola and Jay Moore says, I know it's, I know it's advised to start with the tree of life, but I'm heavily drawn to the tree of death. What's your recommendation? And thanks again. I would recommend to you and, and you're not the only person that thinks that like a lot of people that in their best interest is for them to finish the Sephiroth on the tree of life uh, before getting into the clip off. But a lot of people are drawn towards the clip off and they really want to jump in and experience it. And you're for sure not the only person. Um, so what I would recommend doing is studying about the clip off. Since you have that already drawing this towards it, start studying it so that you can wrap your mind around it so that when you do approach it at some point in your life or on your journey, you'll have that awareness of it. Um, and it can, you know, it can offer you a lot of value in regards to how the world functions and what's really going on. Um, so I would recommend studying it. I wouldn't recommend just jumping into your clip authic initiations right off the bat, unless you really want to, unless that's what you really, really want to do. But just make sure you're very aware that it will rip your entire reality upside down and completely change the probably the direction you're currently on right now. Um, and that's a part of the process. Uh, so I would recommend getting to the top of the Sephiroth and then approaching the clip off first. And um, yeah, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. And definitely study, study the clip off, study books that talk about universe B. So like any of the Kenneth Grant books, uh, for example, the night side of Eden, that's a very valuable book to study. Um, there's that Asenoth Mason book that's called the clip Othic tree or the clip off the tree of clip off. Uh, that's a very valuable book to study as well in regards to what she says about the, the different spheres. Um, and then you can start formulating yourself, whether it's time for you to jump right in. Okay. Thank you very much for the super chat. I appreciate you. Let's see here. So I see we got another super chat. This one's from Mai. Mai says, can you talk about the tunnels of Amalek? Yes. So to my awareness, the tunnels of Amalek are very similar to the tunnels of Set. So I'm going to explain this as best as I can. And this is hard for a lot of people to wrap their mind around, mostly because they don't, they haven't had the experience or th they don't have the awareness of this initiatory system in general. But there are going to be people that do have that awareness and this can offer a lot of value. So listen up. So this is the Sephiroth with the 22 tunnels. Okay. This is universe A. On the back of this tree, you have universe B. And then all these tunnels are the shadow aspects of the front side. So they're called the tunnels of set. Okay. Universe B, which is the darker side, dark matter energy. Then we have the tree underneath the Sephiroth, which is the clip off. This is the clip -off tree. There is a front side to the clip -off tree. So there is a universe A to the clip off. So this is objective hell realms. Okay, dominated by that masculine energy. So this clip, or uh, this universe A clipothic hell realm is controlled by the Yaldabaoth. So this would be Yaldabaoth's hell. This is the hell that all the Christians refer to. Okay. Uh, then on the back side of the clipoth, you have the universe B version of the clipoth, and that is going to be uh, 
the same exact tree as the Sephiroth, just the Universe B version of it underneath. And all these tunnels are going to be called the Tunnels of Amalek. And the realm of Amalek, the Universe B, Klipothic tree, is ruled by reptilian energies. So you'll know that when you're in the, the backside of the Klipoth, Universe B, uh, there you'll see a lot of symbolism of reptiles and dragons because it's it's completely ruled by those draconian energies of destruction and harnessing energy from destruction. So that's why when I started my journey, I got this tattoo that I was intuitively led to get, which is a black dragon, which is the Amalek itself. And then I got these other two dragons as well. Um, so long story short, um, this is the backside of the Klipothic tree and it's called Universe B. And these tunnels of Amalek are very similar to the tunnels of Set. The only difference is, is you are more influenced by the draconian current of energy as you're traveling through the tunnels of Amalek. So you're basically more of a warrior spirit. You're definitely a vampire. Uh, you're vampiric in your energy field. Um, you're essentially being guided by the Amalek. The Amalek force is in you and you're traveling through those tunnels. So once again, it's very similar to the tunnels of Set, which are on the backside of the Sephiroth, except the only difference is when you're in the realm of Amalek going through the tunnels, you're completely influenced by the draconian reptilian current, which once again comes with that very strong level of ruthlessness, um, warrior spirit, and the awareness of being focused on your uh, uh, evolution because you're aware of destruction and you're not afraid to use it and gain energy from it. So that would be the difference. So you can get into the tunnels of set initiation without ever getting to the backside of the clip off. Okay. So for example, as a magician, if you travel to the top of the Sephiroth, this is what I would recommend traveling to the top of the Sephiroth. And then if you want to experience uh, gaining power from the tunnels of set, you can enter in through the gateway of death. And naturally what will happen is when you enter into death, it pops you into the backside of the Sephirothic tree, which is where the tunnels of set exist. So what will happen is your spirit will most likely come down into the sphere of Tifereth, but on the backside of the tree. Okay. It could come up here. It could go up to the top on the back side of the tree. Uh, so if you were on the front side originally, and then you entered into death, if you have a really high vibration, you can enter right here into the back side of Kether, which is associated with the tunnel of set that's connected into the back side of Kether. Okay. So here you have Amproteus and then here you have Gargophius. But a lot of times people will enter through death and then come into the backside of Tifereth. And then, yeah. And then once you're on the backside, you, if you have the awareness of how these tunnels function, you can start doing the in, invocations of the forces of the tunnel to get into that tunnel and start working through it. And all of this, all of these tunnels come with certain powers that you can gain by working through them. It's basically with the archetypal energy coming from the, um, the tarot card, the major arcana that's associated with the tunnel, you're getting the inverse of that tarot card. So if you are in, if you are not an initiate, if you're not a vampire, if you're not a black brother, somebody who's a black magician, left-hand path, these tunnels will destroy you. They will rip you apart and you can get diseases. There's a lot of diseases that are associated with these tunnels. You can study about the tunnels from the book, The Night Side of Eden by Kenneth Grant. But if you are a vampire and you are a black brother, you are left-hand path and you have the proper guidance going into these, meaning you've done invocation of Lucifer or Hecate or any of the other Ars Goetic forces coming from the perspective of gaining their power to successfully travel through the tunnels, 
then you can gain power from these tunnels because they will help you travel through them. And if you can travel through it, you gain the city of the tunnel and you can work through all these different tunnels and not even have to come into the backside of the clip off to initiate into the clip off. You can have worked through all the tunnels of set and gain a lot of, you know, a lot of power, uh, by doing that without even having to go into the clip off. But that would, that would be very challenging, extremely challenging. So what I recommend is that people go straight to the source of all that dark matter energy and all the power. So what I recommend is that people first finish their initiations uh, and go to the top of the tree, Kether, and then come down into Dath, enter into the tunnels of Set, come down to the center of the tree, um, and then travel down to Yasod on the backside of the tree. And then here there will be a sexual act that will take place, a sexual experience that will pop them into the backside of the Klebothic tree. And then they will enter here at Nama, and then they can begin their Klebothic initiations at Gamaliel, ruled by Lilith, but this is the backside of the tree. So now with all these paths they're working through, they're extremely similar to the tunnels of Set, almost synonymous, but they're a little bit more potent and you're a little bit more possessed by that draconian force. So you're more empowered as these tunnels are a little bit more potent. So when you travel through the Klebothic realm and go through the tunnels that you need to go through to make your progress, you're simultaneously gaining the value from the cities of the tunnels of set. So that when you finish your universe B Klebothic initiation, if you do become an Epsissimus, which many people don't, um, then you have full access to the entire tree. Like full access. So when I, whenever I go into the tunnels of set, I can I go in here naturally. So whenever I need a certain power from one of these tunnels, my spirit and soul, my daemon travels to one of these tunnels and pulls on the energy I need from it and gets the city that I need to have from the tunnel. Okay. And I have immunity in these tunnels and they give me power because I've already experienced the energies that I needed to go through during my clipothic initiation. Okay. So I already have an affinity towards these tunnels. Doesn't mean they, they don't affect me still. They do affect me. I do still feel the energetic effects from these tunnels, but I can travel through them extremely fast and gain the power from them very quickly. Okay. Um, so that's what I'm going to say to that, you know, and you don't need to travel all the way through when you get to the backside of the clip off to initiate, you do not need to, um, go to the top. You do not need to become a black brother Epsissimus. You can stop somewhere up here. And that's what I recommend and what I'm going to teach for my, my initiatory uh, package is how to get to here, the lowest of the seven lower spheres of initiation, and then let people decide if they want to go through the crossing of the abyss and overcome Karanzan. Because if you want to stop here and you realize it was such a challenging experience going here and you do not want to go any farther, then I'll give you that chance. I mean, you can stop there. It's okay. You can stop. You don't have to finish. You can still have a lot of power in this sphere. Okay. Um, but if you go through the crossing of the abyss and you're not energetically prepared for it and you get your soul taken from you, then that's something that you can't replace. That's something that you can't get back. You know, Karanzan will forever possess you. And you'll be uh, controlled by chaos. Uh, Karanzan will run, will literally possess you and try to get you to get other people possessed because you're now a chaotic aspect of Karanzan who tries to devour other people's soul. Okay. And there's a lot of occultists that do that. They'll lead you into a meat grinder of the clip off because they get benefited by the Karanzan or the, the demonic by giving you and feeding you to them. Okay. There's a lot of occultists that do that and they're unaware and it's because they failed their crossing of the abyss. And you'll notice a lot of times these occultists have drug addictions. 
they have big mental problems, and eventually over time their lives dwindle and go to nothingness because they're working for chaos because they failed the crossing. So if you don't want to risk it, if you don't think you're ready, you can stop here. And you can actually stop anywhere on this tree, but I would recommend stopping right here uh, and then taking a break and building up more energy before you decide to fully cross. Okay. So that's what I'm going to say about that. I think I covered that in depth. I think that was a good question. So I appreciate you. Um, yeah, I definitely appreciate you, Mai. Thank you for asking that question. Let me say this. Um, so I'm on my Instagram live right now and I'm going to have to end it because I, I have to charge my phone. So if anyone's on here and you want to tune in to the YouTube live, definitely hit the Instagram link and it'll take you right over here. Okay. Other than that, I'm going to roll out. All right, let's go. Oh. Share it to IGTV. Hold on. Oh. All right, one second, everybody. One second. And if anybody has any questions you want to guaranteed get answered, definitely make sure you go ahead and you do so. Uh, because I will answer your question for sure within this uh, live stream. You will get your, an uh, your answer. And I will answer it in the most depth that I possibly can go. Okay. So... What we were just talking about was, you know, Kabbalistic initiation in its purest form, which is more advanced. So if you have no awareness of the Kabbalistic tree, it was probably uh, hard for you to understand what I was just talking about. But uh, as you study the system of initiation and as you study the Kabbalistic tree, it will begin to make sense over time. Okay. So I'm scrolling back up, scrolling all the way back up, seeing where I left off. Here we go. Here we go. James says, I just booked. So James is saying that he just booked a tarot card reading with me. I'm very glad to be doing your reading, James. That's awesome. Uh, Jasmine's intuition says, I'm not doing a call work, but I feel like my life is in that phase of people coming at me. But if I can't break, I have to get through. I want to learn more. So you say, I'm not doing occult work, but I feel like my life is in that phase of people coming at me, but I can't break. I have to get through. So yeah, so you're a great example of what I've been explaining where you can travel through this Sephirothic initiatory system without even knowing that you're on this tree, okay? Without even knowing where you're located, you're somewhere on here as long as you've been taking your evolution seriously and been intending reaching your highest potential. So as you're saying, you're saying, I'm not doing a cult work, but I feel like I'm in that phase where people are coming at me. So you're feeling the initiations that are taking place in your actual life, but you just don't know where you are on the tree. So that's why you're coming across an occultist like myself who understands this entire initiatory system and is here openly communicating it to people. So what I would recommend is booking a tarot card reading with me to pinpoint where you actually are on this tree. And then I'll tell you what you're going through, what you're experiencing and feeling, and then what you're going to be experiencing and feeling within your near and long-term future. Okay? Cranja says, I want to get another reading. I keep referring back to my reading. Very useful. Thank you very much, Cranja, uh, for saying that to the chat. Um, so yeah, Cranja is just confirming you know, the reading and saying that he appreciated the reading and that he's still getting value from it. Um, and he says it, it's very useful. I've literally done, um, I've done over a hundred readings so far, as long as the service has been out. I think it's only been out for like four months now. And out of all those readings, I literally only got one bad feedback. And the, the, the bad feedback that I got was just because the person didn't, didn't want to believe that they were located where they're at, where they actually were. They thought they were somewhere else because a lot of people like to assume that they're farther ahead on their journey than they actually are. And when I give you the reading, I'm not sugarcoating it. I'm giving it to you exactly how I need to tell you exactly where you're at. And yeah, there was one person that felt like they were farther on their journey and the reading clearly said they weren't. I told them and then they, they were upset that 
they thought it wasn't right. And I was just like, you know, I appreciate your feedback and I'm sorry you didn't, you know, you feel like you, you didn't enjoy the reading. Um, but it is what it is. But that was one person out of over a hundred people that I've done. So, uh, yeah, the readings are very valuable. Cran just says, I'm glad Jeremiah is a good example of healthy Leos and not the stereotypical egotistical type. Yeah. Yeah. And I used to be, I used to be the stereotypical type because I was, uh, I was lost. Like I used to be shelled. Um, five years, six years ago, I was not the same person that I am now. And, you know, if any of you look at my YouTube channel and you scroll down to my very first videos that I have released on my channel, you are going to see a real life testament of how this occult initiatory journey has changed me as a, as a person. Okay. Um, my very first videos that I've released on my channel were before I even started initiating into the, uh, the clip tree. And then they go into like literally all the videos I have on my channel from the very first videos lead up to me before I went into the clip off and then me getting into the clip off. And now it's leading up to where I am now after having completed that journey. And you can literally see how it's changed me as a person, how it's changed my behavior. Um, you know, and now the place that I'm at in life is like what I always knew I was going to get to, but I just first needed to go through this journey, this initiatory process to step into that and have it become a reality. So if anyone wants to see like how I actually was and behaved before all of this deep clip authentic initiation, just go to my very first videos on my YouTube channel. And it's embarrassing. Like, like the only reason why I have those videos still uploaded is because I'm a believer and I was the same way. I learned from actually seeing the reality of how things function. So it's embarrassing to have those YouTube videos on my channel. Like at any minute I could delete them and, and pretend like that wasn't me, but I want them to be up so that people can actually see how much this field has changed me. And what I'm speaking about is literally able to completely change you as well. And there's not a lot of people that are teaching this science and it is what it is. You know, I'm here to say it, I'm here to give the opportunity, but if you don't want to take it, that is what it is. You know, I'm not concerned either, you know, cause I'm a black magician. So I love what I do. I love the position I'm in where it's like, I'm just doing what I'm, what I love and I don't need you to buy it. I don't need you to do, to take the path. It's I'm, I'm pinning, I'm pinning people against their own soul, against their own evolution. Are you going to take it? Because if you are, I'm here to help you. I'm here to guide you. Are you going to resist it? And are you going to fight against me? I'll let you do that. I'll take your energy. So I love, I love that position. Um, Yarma Brown says, what ritual question, 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 question details. Um, I think you're referring to a. Let's see. I think you're talking about when you say what ritual, I think you're talking about my top tier service on my Patreon. So that is called the vampire service. And it is a strategic ritual that I perform on the 29th of every month for every new member of that top tier, um, where I am permanently changing your energetic structure to be more universe, be dominant, which basically means more receptive, hyper receptive so that you can take in dark matter energy and uh, transform it or alchemize it into your own power and potential. Okay. And I've already done, I want to say at least five or six of these services so far. And there has been a lot of very profound results from it, from what people have told me. And it is a very powerful ritual. It takes me a while to create as well. It takes me around three to four hours. Um, and I think that's what you're referring to. So if you want to check that out, it's within my Patreon link at the top of this YouTube description. And it is the fourth tier being performed this month. So in about 10 days. Okay. Mary M says, Jer is also a Leo son. No wonder he's so cute. <laughs> That's awesome. And actually I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not a Leo son. My, uh, my son is in Libra. Uh, my, uh, my moon and my ascendant are in Leo. Um, so I definitely have a lot of Leo energy, but I, I'm a, I'm different. I'm a definitely a different kind of Leo because I have the moon in my first house, uh, right next to my ascendant too. 
So the moon is literally the opposite of Leo. So it makes sense that I'm in the occult field and I'm into the uh, darker aspects of the occult coming from that perspective of trying to open the awareness of others towards it because that's the sun Leo aspect and then the moon is more the receptive and darker aspect. And both of them are literally opposites. The, the, the Leo and the sun are opposites. But when you put them together, you get somebody like me who is, uh, you know, very willing and ready to explain the science and the awareness of this occult system, but also somebody that's very uh, receptive and very uh, – deep and dark into it like the, the the really unconscious and subconscious aspects of this system not just what the white you know not just what the white brotherhood is going to tell you or the any of these mainstream occult orders like we're talking about the clip off we're talking about the tunnels of set we're going to go into the universe b because this is where the power is you know if the people that are controlling the world we live in today are using this system of uh, the Kabbalah, the darker side of Kabbalah to control the world. Um, well, why not dive into those realms prepared to take the power from it and then change the structure of the matrix we live in to control it? That's all I'm saying. So thank you, Maryam. Cranjus says, Jeremiah is the stud. I appreciate you, Cranjus. Wild Child Tarot says, cool, my north node is in Leo. That's awesome. Uh, let's see. Wild Child says, ha, 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 you remember me. Absolutely, I remember you. I definitely do. I even remember you um, telling me that you were wanting to do a collaboration with me to help me build up my channel when I used to not have that many subscribers whatsoever. And I really, I never forgot about that. And I really did appreciate that. And it's those little things that matter, you know. I remember you when I had like no subscribers and you you had a pretty big subscriber base and you were like, hey, do you want to do a collaboration with me so I can help you get your subscribers up? I'll never forget that. That was very nice of you. Den Sal says, I signed up. I've been uh, I've been wanting one for a while. I just haven't been home for a few months and thought it was a Zoom face-to-face. -face. Thanks, Jer. Yeah, um, there's a lot of people that do think that. That it's it's a, it's like a live call. Like people will book the, the reading with me and they'll think it's a live call and then I'll message them and I'll tell them, hey, I just need a random three-digit number and then uh, the purpose for your reading. And then they'll they'll be confused and I'll just let them know, hey, look, no, I literally you you can go about your day, you can go about your schedule. All I need is your quick text to let me know the numbers. And I'm gonna do the reading on my own time because that's how I can do a better reading for you. I would like for me to be face to face with you and doing the whole reading, I can do that. That's great. But I would rather not have you there and just get into my zone and, you know, really get into the reading. And then I'll break down an entire video like I'm really good at doing and explain exactly what your reading means. Okay. As much into as much depth as I possibly can. Um, and then not only that, but then you have the reading forever, literally forever. It is always going to be there. So you can always go over it. And that's how it's supposed to be. It's a three card reading, uh, present, near future, long term future. So the near future context is anywhere from two to eight months. Long term future is anywhere from a year to five years. So obviously, to have a permanent reading like that is going to be very valuable that you can look, you know, keep looking back at because of the reading and the way that it's designed. You know, it's literally designed for that. So that's awesome. And I appreciate you saying that, Denzel. Um, there is definitely a lot of people that think that. And I'm glad that you're able to book your reading with me. And I'm excited to do it for you. And you will be hearing from me very soon. Cran just says, where are the haters these days? I want more generators to feed on. That's funny. Um, right now, there's not many haters because I've been pulling on a lot of uh, Jupiter energies. Uh, right now in the process that I'm in, which is a magical process of raising the bride, um, I'm working with those Jupiter energies, okay? So right now, there's a lot of good fortune that's coming to me. There's a lot of expansion, higher level truth. That These are the types of energies I'm being influenced by. Um, but also at the same time, you know, there's probably people that are not wanting to be haters on this channel because as soon as somebody comes in and hates, they get attacked by my chat, which is, I love it. I just love it. I love the psychic warfare program. 
Um, it's literally the funniest thing. It is so funny. Like for those of you that don't know, the Psychic Warfare program is a part of the YouTube membership where you get access to exclusive emojis. I'll just type them in the chat real quick. Boom. I have the Death Tarot, the Tower Tarot, seventh term of the Fibonacci sequence, and then the Amalek. Enter that in the chat. And these are literally, these are emojis that I've, I've created myself and I set them up in a way where you can literally uh, cause psychic damage to a target. So those of you that know and are YouTube members, you know how to use the Psychic Warfare program um, because I, I, I explain that on the uh, YouTube member private post. Um, and it's basically a dungeon where you can put all your enemies and all your targets in and just curse them literally in a matter of three seconds. Um, and it really does take energetic effect, but it's also funny because when people come into my live stream chat and they start saying dumb stuff, like stuff about Christianity, a lot of the times is what you get. Everyone turn to God. You're all burning in hell, whatever the case may be. Uh, my chat YouTube members immediately go and attack. And it's so funny to see that because a lot of times I don't think people expect that. So they'll come in and they're, you know, they start hating. And the next thing you know, there's like five YouTube members that are saying destroy target followed by these emojis. And it really does have an energetic effect. It really will cause uh, uh, energetic damage to the person that you're putting in the parentheses. And it will find the pathway to the actual physical human that's behind the keyboard. Um, so that's why you never see the same person ever come back to the chat because they realize this is not a, this is not a happy place for a hater to be, but for everyone that's using the, the program, we get the energy from it, you know, because we're all doing that and you have the badge next to your name, which is first the moon, then my sigil, which is a vampiric sigil, which can vampirize, pull in that energy for yourself. So it's all strategically structured. And I am the only person that is doing this on YouTube right now, okay, through my YouTube membership program. And very soon here, I'm going to be creating a new sequence of emojis that is going to be for fortunate things. So it's I have one for psychic warfare and then one for healing, bringing fortune, bringing, you know, whatever the case is, whatever goes around fortune, okay, fortunate events, fortunate feelings, whatever the case. I'm going to create one very soon. Uh, probably next month that is going to be available to the YouTube members as well. Okay. And I see that there was a super chat that didn't pop up for some reason. So I'm going to read it now. Um, and it was by Brian Forshee. Oh, it probably did pop up, but it was so quick. I was busy explaining the Kabbalah. I didn't see it, but I see it now. So Brian Forshee says, how much is a counseling with you? Not a reading. So a 30 minute consultation with me is $60 and through that consultation, we can either do it live so we can be face to face on uh, like FaceTime or something. Um, or it can be a phone call, whatever you prefer. I like doing the face to face because I like seeing who I'm talking to. Um, so for 30 minutes, it's $60 and then for an hour, it's going to be $110. Okay. And basically we can talk about anything in regards to the occult field based on the consultations that I've had so far. Most of the consultations have been on, Hey, you know, I'm traveling through my initiatory journey. This is what I'm experiencing. You know, am I moving in the right direction? Uh, what's going on right now? Is this, is this a good thing or is this a bad thing? Um, do you have any idea where I am on the tree? And yes, during those consultations, I'm, able to give people a lot of clarity on what's going on in their journey. And I do like doing the consultations. I mean, it's, it's always cool speaking to somebody who is, you know, willing to invest that amount of money to figure out what's going on on their journey. Um, and a lot, most of the people I've done consultations with have been very, uh, professional about it. And they've come into the consultation with already written questions down. So when we get into it, it's like, Hey, you know, this is my question what's your response to this? What do you think about this? And I love doing that. You know, it's, it's a great thing. So once again, where you can book a consultation with me is by shooting me an email, letting me know that you're trying to book a consultation with me. Okay. So my email is, I'll type it in the chat so you can see it. So my email is Jeremiah James Schwartz at gmail.com. And you can literally just send me a email letting me know 
whether you want a 60 or excuse me, a 30 minute chat or an hour chat, and then I'll tell you how we can move forward from there. Okay. Thank you very much for leaving that super chat, Brian Forshee. I appreciate you. I think that may have helped other people figure out how they can get in touch with me. Um, and it, I'm glad to see you in the chat as well. I don't I don't know if you were here the whole time. Brian Forshee, glad to see you. Alistair, glad to see you in here. Another YouTube member. Um, LVX is in here. What's up, LVX? Good to see you as always. Let's see. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. We got a lot of YouTube members in here. Uh, if anyone wants to become a YouTube member and gain access to that a psychic warfare program, you can click that live link that is pinned at the top of this uh, chat section right now. That's where you can become a YouTube member. Or if you're watching this and you're not live, you can literally go to the third link in my YouTube drop down. Okay, that'll take you there. So let me continue where I was reading these questions. And if anybody has any questions they want to guarantee you get answered while I'm here, definitely make sure you drop in and you ask those questions because I'm here and I'm answering. Okay, in the most depth as well, for sure. LVX says, hey, Jeremiah, I hope you're doing well. Glad to see you on here, LVX. I appreciate you, and I'm doing absolutely wonderful. Excuse me. Absolutely wonderful. Matter of fact, I'm going to get some water. One moment, everybody. And I appreciate everyone who's in the chat right now and everyone who's in the live stream and has hit a thumbs up. I see we have 27 thumbs up, 17 people in the chat right now. Okay, let's do this. Okay. Endrit says, very nice. Thumbs up. Yes, very nice. Wild Child says, sorry about the typo. No worries. Michelle says, it will be my second reading. Yep, that's awesome. I am glad to do that second reading for you. Let's see the progress that you've been able to make. Wild Child says, thank you. Wild Child also says, I appreciate the way you thoroughly answered my questions. I'm the same. I have a desire to go off into the deep end. Exactly. It's true. It's very true. Tevin Duke said, dude, it's been a while. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, yeah, I, it has been a while. Tolan J. Moore says, awesome. Can't wait. There we go. Mai says, what's the role of anger in magic? Because when I try to hex someone and I'm very angry at the enemy. The hex works 100%. Do you use something similar or no? Um, so yeah, that is for sure going to enhance your curse curses or you know black magic when you're angry because that emotion is an energy in motion. So if you're angry, there's the fire around you. There is that fire of anger around you. So when you're in your ritual and you're trying to direct that fire, that anger towards a target and destroy them, that anger is channeling into that enemy or that target and it will cause a quicker effect. Now, if a lot of the times when I'm doing that type of work on, an, on a target, yeah, I'm angry too. And that for sure is going to really enhance the practice, really enhance the, the damage to the target if you're actually angry. Um, and uh, if you're not though, then the goal is to invoke a spirit that is fiery in nature, which is pretty much any of the Ars Goetia demons. Uh, and you can do your own research and find an Ars Goetia that is directly associated with uh, harming a target. Um, or yeah, that's exactly what I would do. I mean, what, you know, there's another, you know, you could use a force like, uh, as mode, which is a fire clipothic entity associated with the fiery sphere of Golachab within the clip off. So invoking as uh, can increase or surround you with that same energetic field of anger. And you don't even have to really be angry. You can just invoke that force and it will come into you and you will just naturally have that energetic quality to you. 
and then damage it, damage your target with it, or send asthma day at your target. So that's exactly what it is. But if you're actually angry going into it, that will enhance it a lot. Okay. Let's see here. Occult Cat TV says, "How do we cross and not get possessed by Karanzon eternally?" Um, so you're talking about crossing the abyss within the clip off. You just have to be, you know, prepared. You know, leading up to the abyss within the clip off, you have all these other clip off spheres. Okay, so you want to make sure you're really taking your time going through these spheres, doing invocations of all the spirits associated with them. And make sure that you have a strong connection with Lucifer or Hecate or Belial or all three. Uh, and making sure you have those guides that can help you understand dark matter energy to a deeper degree. And um, definitely being a vampire is, is, is necessary to successfully cross. Meaning you understand that pulling in and receiving energy helps you gain power. Uh, even dark matter energy, you have to be aware of that, not resist it, but be open to it. Um, and it's things like that, that can help you cross. Okay. Alistair says, are Shugal and Satan kissing cousins? Uh, no. T.O.B. says the nine worlds in the North Panthe uh, Pantheon is similar. Yeah. Yeah. And the North Pantheon is based off the same Kabbalistic uh, tree. Uh, so the Kabbalistic tree dates all the way back to the Egyptians and the Atlanteans and the Norse used the same type of structure. They just had their own mythology behind it. It's literally this structure runs through our blood. So this is the structure that governs all of evolution. Okay. On this planet specifically. Leo Jin leaves these emojis of coffins. That's awesome. Endrit says, what do you think about cigarettes, alcohol, and weed? Um, I think that there are substances that can alter your behavior. They can all alter your perception and your awareness. Um, I'm not going to say they're all bad. There may be times where you can get value from those things. But most of the times, people are addicted to these substances. And it causes their degradation. So the key to real occult power is being impeccable, meaning you have no addiction to anything that changes your, your state of mind that you need to ingest or inhale uh, to produce that dopamine or euphoria. So the most professional occultists do not smoke cigarettes and do not do not commonly drink alcohol or smoke weed. We're, we're, so, we're sober basically. Um, doesn't mean we don't do that every once in a while and enjoy ourselves if we want, but I'm telling you right now, the most professional and powerful people, uh, refrain from addictions. Okay. In, in whatever way that manifests and cigarettes, alcohol, and weed are definitely some of the most common addictions that are around our planet right now. Brian Forshee says, how long this been going? Never got notification today. Uh, we've been on here for about almost two hours now. Okay, almost two hours. Uh, and that's unfortunate. You never got the notification, but you can watch the video once it's over. Leo Jin says, cigarettes, spirit, candy, alcohol is juice for the spirit, and weeds is the holiest of incense. Um yeah, but there's also a lot of people that think that and they have absolutely no power whatsoever. So it's going to be a lot easier for me to psychically damage somebody that's an addict because I can use a spirit that's associated with addiction. And as soon as they use the, the, the drug or smoke the weed or drink the alcohol, once they're drunk or once they're high, that spirit can really get to them. So that's just how I would approach it. LVX says an hour and a half. Let's see. Alistair says, mine was also late. That's very interesting. Devin says, can we transfer the energy of our wand into one of another? Variety slash sold online. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you definitely can. You can transfer the energy 
of your wand into another wand and activate that wand if your wand is powerful enough to do that. So as long as you've been in the occult field for enough time to have enough power to really take a regular stick and then use the wand that you've been using during your occult practices and visualize yourself placing that energy in and then seeing it activate, yeah, you can. Good question too. Okay, Arcane says, the last guy in your last video talking about voodoo. I wanted to destroy him, but I was led elsewhere. Very interesting. I'm not even aware of what you're talking about. Maybe there was somebody in the chat from the other day that was talking about voodoo. Um, I'm not aware of it, but you say you wanted to destroy him, but you were led elsewhere. Okay, interesting. Uh, okay, I think we got a super chat. So I see a super chat that is from Brian Forshee. So Brian Forshee says, I'll save for a con consultation. Missed most of this one. No worries, man. No worries, man. And that's awesome. If you want to get a consultation with me, that'd be cool. We could talk for sure. Let's see here. So I'm scrolling back up. Arcane says, like, I don't know why, but that pissed me off just seeing it invoked a rage. There you go. Brian Porsche says, how do I set them up? Um, so I already explained how you set up the consultation with me. Just send me an email. It's in my uh, email that I posted in the chat. Devin says, LOL, I saw that comment too. I was led elsewhere as well. Interesting. That's very interesting. LVX says LVX equals Lux Light Lucifer 777 is his number. There you go. Brian Forshee says, missed most of it, man. Sad. <laughs> LVX says, it'll be uploaded later. Okay, cool. My says, yeah, anger is powerful, but my gums always end up being inflamed. Ayurveda says my body is mostly water-based, but my gums are fire-based, so it knocks me out for a week. Very painful. Um, yeah, there you go. I mean, it's all about developing your, your, your body to be able to use that energy. It's like being able to harness that aggressive energy. You know, obviously, if you go very deep into it and try to channel all this really aggressive energy uh, all at once for, you know, the first time or, or for your beginning, your beginner times doing it, it can cause inflammation uh, and it can cause um, uh, damage to your physical body. Because what is that fire energy? It's directly connected to Mars and Mars can cause inflammation in the body. But over time, if you do controlled psychic warfare, your body gets, a, gets attuned to it and gets used to it. Um, so your body gets less inflamed over time because you get more used to it as a practice. But if you don't usually do it and then you go all out, yeah, you can experience, you know, that rage, that energy of rage to physically affect your body as well by like maybe making your face or your body really red. As you're saying, your gums get really red and, and, and inflamed. Uh, maybe someone's eyes start feeling like they're burning or your nose or whatever the case may be. So. It's all about developing your connection to that force, which is a Mars force. It's a Mars energy. 
Alistair says, bring the new program. It will be out. It will be out in 2022, the initiation program. LVX says, alcohol equals Al Cool or Al Ghul or Al Gaul, Arabic term meaning body eating spirits. Another reason liquor is called spirits or booze and gin and tonic. Alcohol destroys the aura. Yeah, and alcohol can be actually useful in the clipothic realm to a certain degree uh, because there are certain aspects of your energy field that you actually do want to destroy. And alcohol can help you destroy that and then rebuild after it's destroyed. But obviously, if you're an alcohol addict, you're constantly destroying your energy field and you're never giving yourself time to rebuild a new one. So as long as you're using substances from an intentional strategic standpoint, they can be valuable, but you always got to remember that your natural state of being is never going to lie to you, is always going to um, lead you in the right direction no matter what. So yes, you can use substances at certain times that could potentially offer you value. I have myself, but I've also been addicted to certain substances and I've let them control my behavior and my psychology. So it's very hard to dabble with substances without falling into them. So thank you for leaving that. LVX, let's see. LVX says, it pokes holes in the energy body. Cannabis opens you right up as well, but doesn't damage it as much as alcohol does. Um, yeah, I mean, I would go as far as saying they, they're, they're the exact same in different ways because I've been highly addicted to uh marijuana and alcohol. I mean, I spent five years of my life being a heavy smoker and I used to sell marijuana and that's how I bought this tattoo when I was uh, 18 years old. And I used to smoke every day, like at least three, four, five grams a day, every day. And I was highly addicted and it was messing with my entire reality. I lost who I was. My soul was easy, but was very easily shelled because of my smoking addiction. And I stayed like that for years. Then after I quit marijuana, I took up alcohol to try to replace it. Uh, and that had its own consequences uh, as well. So they're, they're, they both have their vices for sure. It's not one is better than the other. They both have their vices. Now, one of the tricky things about marijuana is a lot of people will tell you, it's okay, you're fine. You, can, you know, it's, it's, it's healthy, it's a plant. And there's a lot of people that smoke marijuana, but there's also a lot of people that smoke marijuana and make no progress in their evolution and make no progress in their life. And for the the, the choice they're making, they're okay being where they're at. So they, they, they stay to that routine. Um, but for somebody like me, it was never, it was never meant for me. So it affected me harder. It affected me more profoundly because I was addicted to something I knew I needed to let go. And everyone else around me was still doing it and it was like fine for them. So I psyched myself out and I was like, I'm going to keep doing it because everyone else around me is doing it. It's not affecting them. So why is it, you know, it shouldn't harm me, but it was, I was the corporate of the negative effects of that addiction in my friend circle because I had a lot of potential and I was shelling my own soul, shelling my own purpose by being addicted. So that's what I'm going to say to that. Thank you for bringing that up. Let let him in, Nin says hi again. LOL. Do you know anything about radionics? Uh, I don't know too much about radionics, but I know they work and I know they can be very valuable for sure. Different frequencies and different tunes can completely cause huge amounts of energetic effect for sure. Wild child says I made my wand from a spring bock horn. The horn makes for a perfect handle. And I stuck a big spirit quartz at the end of it. That's awesome. That's so cool. And I like how you got creative with it. Devin McLean says, that's awesome, wild child. Yeah, it is. Arcane says, that voodoo guy was in your magic tools video. Magic tools video. Oh, magic tool. Oh, so it was a guy in the live chat of the magic tools. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, you know, there's always going to be a person every now and then that comes in and hates all you got to do though, is you just have to use a psychic warfare program on them. You don't even have to talk to them. You just type in their name. Do you remember the, the, the name of the person? I'll use it on them right now. 
Um, but you just type in their name in parentheses, followed by the emojis that you're supposed to use, and then it'll attack them. And you don't even have to say a word, and it will cause damage to them. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see here. Mai says, speaking of alcohol, I remember there was a liquor or whatever company in Sezicha called Black Dragon. Their alcohol made people blind because it was met <laughs> methanol led to prohibition. Amalek question mark? Um, yeah, sounds like it. Amalek is is definitely a destructive force. And probably everyone who was led to drinking that alcohol and then ended up getting those consequences by being blind, they were probably en enemies of Amalek. <laughs> Wild Child Tarot says, heart to Devin McLean. Oh, Brian Forsey says, I left that question before you answered, but I know you answered. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Devin says, true. I always felt, I always felt to utilize these things as tools in a sort of shamanistic way. Exactly. Yes. And that's exactly what the shamans did. They would use psychedelics and drugs to only cause specific changes or I'll say this in very strategic ways to help them transition into new awarenesses and new perspectives. But that doesn't mean that shamans didn't make mistakes too and get end up getting addicted to these substances as well. There's a lot of shamans that got addicted as well. So, you know, the key is to be sober. The key is to be impeccable completely because you can access any psychedelic state or any type of state you need off your natural energy field. Uh, and your natural energy field is always going to pull you in the direction that is most in alignment for you. Okay. So I would recommend having a generalized foundation of sobriety living so that you can make sure you know what your thoughts are. You can make sure you know what you're truly feeling and what you're supposed to be feeling. But yeah, you know, on occasion, feel free to enjoy yourself. You know, there's no problem with that. But just remember, addiction pulls you in pretty quickly. Okay. Endrit says, I understand alcohol, but what do you mean cannabis opens you up? Also, what do you think about cigarettes? Cannabis just makes you like have to let go. Like you're not really, uh, to my experience, you're not really in control of your reality. Uh, the amount that I would smoke, you weren't really in control of your reality. Uh, it was just like you were just hanging out, goofing around. Uh, observing things and you're just like kind of out of out of control. You you don't really know who who your true foundation is when you're really really high. Um, so it opens you up in that moment. You're more susceptible to external influence, which can be good and can be very bad. Um, you say also, what do you think about cigarettes? Um, nicotine is the same thing. It's the same concept. You know, you can use it to help you get into certain states of mind. That can be beneficial, but it can also completely destroy your lungs and you can get addicted to nicotine where you feel like you need nicotine to get through your day. Wild Brazil says, dang, I'm a daily smoker thinking it doesn't affect my spirituality. I have contemplating to do. Yeah. I mean, like, like, let's be honest. Listen to your intuition. Does your intuition tell you that that's right for you? Because if it does truly tell you that, then continue doing what you're doing. There's no reason for you to stop. But if you know deep down that you should stop, not just because I'm telling you, but you know deep down there's something you need to change in regards to maybe putting down the cigarettes or whatever uh, or putting down the, the marijuana. If you know deep down, if your soul is truly telling you that, then that's what you want to listen to because that's the reality for most people. Okay. It's just that there's not many people that will tell them that. Occult Cat TV says, thanks for your vid on the Abyss fam. Everyone go check the vid out after this. So Occult Cat is talking about my most recent YouTube video that's been uploaded called Different Locations on the Abyss. And it is a very valuable video if you want to understand a little bit more about your ego deaths. 
So thank you very much, Occult Cat TV. I appreciate you for giving that shout out. Devin says, LMAO, same. I smoke weed like a train. I'm like the green magician. <laughs> there you go. Uh, be about three weeks till I can book a consultation. Perfect. I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. LVX says, only during the high, it makes you more susceptible to be influenced from lower interdimensional entities. Anything that takes you off your center does that really. Yes, absolutely. What LVX just said is very true. Letamine says, I'm thinking of buying a radionic machine and putting a crystal on it. Go ahead. That could be pretty cool. Okay, everybody. I have hit my limit of the live stream today. I've been on here for two hours. I've had a wonderful time. I've, you know, this is awesome. I love doing these live streams. I think a lot of amazing questions have been asked. So I am going to be wrapping it up right here. Um, I appreciate all of you specifically who have left super chats and have really intended to get your uh, questions answered in the most depth that you possibly can. Um, I appreciate everyone who has been active in this uh, live chat as well, because there has been tons of great questions that were asked. I think tons of people have received value that potentially can transform their life. Um, I like doing the live stream as well. I like engaging with everybody. You know, it's always new. You never know what you're going to experience when you come on a live stream. So that makes it fun and exciting for me. Um, and yeah, I appreciate everyone who's in the chat and or in the live stream in general, people who are not even leaving messages. I just appreciate you for really absorbing this content and definitely make sure you hit a thumbs up, uh, as you're rolling out. Um, so yeah, it's been a great live stream. I appreciate everyone. If anyone wants to gain access to any of the exclusive content that I've been mentioning throughout this uh, live stream, then definitely make sure you check out my Patreon, which is going to be the first link in my YouTube description. So literally just go to the drop down of the YouTube description and you'll see that first link. And I have four tiers on there. You can look into those tiers. Every one of them offers something different, but there is an exclusive vault of content that is not public, that is not on my YouTube channel, that is very valuable information that I do have on my Patreon. And that is one of the most popular things about my uh, business in general, universal mastery. So definitely make sure you look into that. And especially if you want to take advantage of the uh, service that I perform on the 29th, that is coming up. So take advantage of it uh, right now, if that's what you're into. Um, now, the next thing I'd like to say is check out the second link below. That's where you can book your tarot card reading with me. So literally throughout this live stream, I believe I got like four or five bookings from people because they became aware of what exactly my readings are about and what I do for them. So if you are watching this, whether you're live right now or if you're watching this later when we're not live, if you would like to book your tarot card reading with me, you can book at the second link below in this YouTube description, okay? I pretty much explained everything about the reading throughout this video, so I don't need to go into too much depth now, but you can book it at the second link. So go ahead and do that if that's what you're interested in, okay? And then the third thing is make sure you go and you check out the third link in the YouTube description because that's where you can literally become a YouTube member, okay? YouTube members makes your name show up in green. You get access to all the exclusive emojis that I have strategically programmed for psychic warfare to target your enemies. Um, I have an entire YouTube video that explains that process and how it works. It's called in parentheses, YouTube members, uh, followed by psychic warfare program. So if you watch that YouTube video, it will explain exactly how that, uh, psychic warfare program works. Okay. And the link to join is the third link below, or it is pinned in the chat right now. Okay. So with that being said, is that what I, is that everything that I need to say right now? Let's see. I believe that's everything. Okay. Okay. So, yep. So that's going to wrap it up. Everyone, I appreciate you. And I hope you all have a wonderful uh, rest of the day or night, wherever you are. And there is actually one last thing I did want to mention. Okay. This is it. Um, this is my 21st live stream that I've done on my YouTube channel and I have released publicly, meaning once this ends, I'm going to upload it to my YouTube channel so anyone can watch it. Um, once I get to the 22nd YouTube live stream, which is the next one after this one, they are no longer going to be publicly uploaded to my YouTube channel. 
instead they're going to be uploaded to my patreon so all my patreon members are going to have access that are tier two and up they're all going to have access to all of this youtube live streaming after the live stream is over so if you want to gain access to the youtube lives once they're over um you will be able to at tier two and up once i get to the 22nd live stream so that means 23 and up are all going to be on my patreon okay other than that everybody that's where i'm going to leave it i appreciate you hope you have a wonderful rest of the day or night wherever you are and i'll see you on the next one later